Well, as I was thinking about what to share, the thought came to mind that I should talk to you about something that has to do with outdoors. So I've entitled this uh, Outdoor Living. And there's a statement in uh, Councils on Health, page 231, that says the advantage of outdoor life must never be lost sight of. Have you lost sight of the value of being outdoors? Well, certainly our society has in this country. Um, some countries where it's very warm, then, uh, you know, it's like they're outdoors all the time because their windows allow the air to come through their house and uh, so on. But here in this country, we have houses that are either air conditioned or heated and very little uh, outdoor air gets in the house. So we get used to that lifestyle and forget that there is an advantage to outdoor life. God started us off right in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. It says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So God gave to Adam the home that would be outdoors. He didn't have a house like we have. He lived outdoors. And then uh, going down to verse 15, it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So his occupation was taking care of the garden. His home was outdoors. His occupation was outdoors. Now, I realize, um, in fact, as I was thinking about it, you know, the enemy has moved us farther and farther away from the outdoor life. <clears throat> and we probably cannot go back 100% to the outdoor life because of, of where we have to earn a living and, and so on. But if we keep in mind that God always had a reason why he set things up the way he did. And it is beneficial for us to be outdoors. In uh, Ministry of Healing 261, it says, The plan of life which God appointed for our first parents has lessons for us. <clears throat> the more closely his plan of life is followed, the more wonderfully will he work to restore suffering humanity. Now we're going to look at a number of quotations that have to do with people that are sick getting well. But <clears throat> the truth is today, even those who think they're well are not well. We are all sick to some degree or other. And so not only is the outdoor life beneficial in restoring whatever level of sickness we have, but in keeping us well, which is a lot better than getting sick and then having to try to get well. So the plan of life which got appointed for our first parents has lessons for us. The more closely his plan of life is followed, the more wonderfully will he work to restore suffering humanity. Now just to remind us of uh, a bunch more of Bible examples without reading all the text, I trust you understand about these. We see Abraham and he starts out, when we first see Abraham, he's living in a house probably similar to ours. But God calls him to leave his house and live in a tent. And he spent the rest of his life living in a tent. 
basically living outdoors. Then <clears throat> Moses, no doubt, lived in a pretty nice place, but God called him out of that for 40 years to herd sheep out in the wilderness. He was no doubt outdoors every day, most of the day. Then we have David. He gets a good start. He's a shepherd, and I, he didn't live that way his whole life, but he, he got a good start and uh, was outdoors. Elisha, when uh, God finds Elisha, here he is behind 12 yoke of oxen, and he's plowing. So we know the farmers spend a lot of time outdoors. Amos, the Bible mentions, was a herdsman. Tells even where he was a herding. Then we come to Jesus. When we think about the life of Jesus, most of his life was spent outdoors. And we'll look at a little more of that. And we're familiar with the fact that several of his disciples were fishermen. Fishermen spend a lot of time outdoors. And as we, as we kind of look through the Bible, we see that in the beginning of the Bible, most everyone's occupation was outdoors. But <clears throat> as we come down past the Bible times, there's less and less of that uh, going on. Here's an interesting thought again from Councils on Health, page 162. He, talking about Jesus, found recreation amidst the scenes of nature, gathering knowledge as he sought to understand nature's mysteries. His hours of greatest happiness were found when he could turn aside from the scenes of his labors to go into the fields, to meditate in the quiet valleys, to hold communion with God on the mountainside or amid the trees of the forest. Notice it says Jesus was the happiest when he was outdoors. And I believe there's a connection from what we're going to study. We'll see clearly there is a connection as to why he was the happiest when he was outdoors. Now I'm afraid in general, I don't know, you know, about each of you, but in general, we're happiest when we're indoors. So something needs to be <laughs> adjusted. <clears throat> because Jesus was happiest when he was outdoors in the scenes of nature, being able to even conduct his worship outdoors. <clears throat> Now, just a few uh, passages from the Bible in regard to when he was outdoors. Uh, Matthew 5.1, this is where the Sermon on the Mount took place. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. So Jesus generally held church outdoors. It's interesting. I was thinking, I wonder if we shouldn't build an outdoor place at the New England church. <laughs> We've got the space for it. All of our speaking and preaching outside. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes of the year it wouldn't work, but uh, there are times of the year it's very pleasant. In Matthew 8, verse 1, it says, When he was come down from the mountain, so he had spent time up, on the mountain and he came down in Matthew 14 23 it says he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when evening was come he was there alone so everybody else went back home to their house but he stayed there in the mountain <coughs> Matthew 15 uh, 29 says he went up into a mountain Matthew 17, 1. Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain. That was 
the Mount of Transfiguration. And they spent the night, which often was the case, spending the night outdoors. Matthew 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. So now Jesus has been resurrected. He's already <coughs> arranged that they will meet him outdoors in a mountain. And so they go there to meet him. Well, we could uh, read a whole lot more, but in uh, Councils on Health 162, it, it gives some of the reasons. Why did Jesus like to do his ministry outdoors? During his ministry, Jesus lived to a great degree an outdoor life. So not only was he the happiest when he could be outdoors, but if you add it up, where did Jesus spend his time? He spent most of his time outdoors. His journeys from place to place were made on foot, and much of his teaching was given in the open air. In training his disciples, he often withdrew from the confusion of the city to the quiet of the fields as more in harmony with the lessons of simplicity, faith, and self-abnegation he desired to teach them. Now, here's the contrast that Jesus understood. When we are indoors, we are looking primarily at what man has done. And in our home, we're often looking at what we have done. We are looking at the things which man does. When we're outdoors, we're looking at primarily what God has done. And the result is different. If most of our time we're surrounded by what man has done, it produces a different character than when we are surrounded by what God has done. And here's some of the lessons that it mentions, which we need desperately today. Simplicity, faith, self-abnegation, all those things he knew he could teach people if he could get them outdoors. And so he brought them out outdoors. Plus, we're told that the crowds were so big, there was no building that would hold them anyway. So <clears throat> it made it easy. Uh, this one's Councils on Health 162. Same page. Christ loved to gather the people about him under the blue heavens, on some grassy hillside or on the beach beside the lake. Here, surrounded by the works of his own creation, he could turn their thoughts from the artificial to the natural. See, the artificial is what man has done. The natural is what God has done. And he could turn their thoughts away from the artificial to the natural. You know, one of the things that this would change is how much money we spend on the natural. I mean, on the artificial. Because the more time we spend in an artificial setting, the more money we want to spend on that artificial surrounding. And so he had a lot of reasons why he wanted to get them out where they would be with the natural. Also, here's another one. In the growth and development of nature were revealed the principles of his kingdom. So as we are out in nature, we learn how to walk the Christian life because the principles are the same. In fact, I may have said in one of my sermons before that if people were gardeners, they would understand righteousness by faith better. <coughs> we wouldn't have so many theories that are just not correct because the principles of the way nature works is the same principle 
that salvation works by. One time Ellen White was given a dream and it had to do with the sanitarium work that Seventh-day Adventists were called to do. And I found this very interesting, uh, just a portion of this dream. It's in a manuscript 50 that was uh, written in 1902, pages 40, or paragraphs 48 to 51. In the night season, a view of the sanitarium was shown me. The institution was not so very large, but it was complete. It was surrounded by beautiful ornamental trees. And beyond these were orange groves, connected with the place were gardens in which the women patients, if they chose, could cultivate flowers of every description. Now I know that one of the reasons at Wildwood why outside of every room there's a flower bed was because those that built that building have been reading some of these things. And uh, so as we read this though, we see it was far more extensive than that. We had beautiful trees around and then we had gardens and all kinds of, of things that would draw people's attention to being outdoors. Outdoor exercise in these gardens was prescribed as a part of the regular treatment. So when the doctor was giving the uh, treatment program, one of the things that was given was outdoor exercise as part of the treatment in the gardens, not just walking. You know, walking is good, but also in the gardens. Thus, I was instructed by the Lord. Scene after scene passed before me. In one scene, I could see a number of patients who had just come to one of our sanitariums established in the country. In another scene, I saw the same company. But oh, how transformed. They were walking about and talking and appeared happy. Disease had gone, the skin was clear, the countenance joyful, the body full of health. <laughs> Amazing. Such a simple solution to getting well. Of course, there were other things too, not just that. After this dream, here is what Ellen White testified had happened to herself. Never did I prize the value of outdoor life as a means of restoring the sick to health. So after she saw that picture of how these people changed, she thought, wow, it really is important to be outdoors. Never did I prize the value of outdoor life as a means of restoring the sick to health as I prized it after these scenes passed before me. I had always taught these principles, but never before had I so clearly seen the life-giving power in nature. Since these views were given me, I have felt intensely over the matter and have earnestly desired to give the light to all who are engaged in medical missionary work. Well, <clears throat> that covers all of us because every Seventh-day Adventist is to be a medical missionary and we can't tell them they need to be outdoors if we're not outdoors. And so God wants us to be healthy from having as much time as possible outdoors and to help those that are sick to realize that if they will do the same, many of their sicknesses will go away. Amen. Here's some uh, more benefits from Councils on Health, page 167. When they get outdoors, 
here's what happens. Seeing the flowers, plucking the ripe fruit, listening to the happy songs of the birds has a peculiarly exhilarating effect on the nervous system. Now the condition of our nervous system has a lot to do with our health. But here it's telling how the nervous system gets healed. From outdoor life, men and women and children gain a desire to be pure and guileless. So it's beneficial in child training that children more naturally are drawn to these qualities. By the influence of the quickening, reviving, life-giving properties of nature's great medicinal resources, here's a few more benefits. The functions of the body are strengthened. The intellect awakened. If we have church outside, less people fall asleep. <laughs> the imagination quickened. The spirits enlivened. And the mind prepared to appreciate the beauty of God's Word. Sounds like a lot of benefits, doesn't it? We could spend time on each, each one of those. Again, Councils on Health, page 170. Nature is God's physician. The pure air, the glad sunshine, the beautiful flowers and trees, the orchards and vineyards, and outdoor exercise amid these surroundings are health-giving. And it calls it, defines it, the elixir of life. Outdoor life is the only medicine that many invalids need. So it's not just talking about people that don't feel good. You know, a lot of people don't feel good. They get up in the morning and they don't feel good. But it's talking about people that are actually invalids. And if they had only one treatment of being outdoors a lot, they would get well. Isn't that incredible? Outdoor life is the only medicine that many invalids need. Its influence is powerful to heal sickness caused by fashionable life. Guess what? Most of us live fashionable life. <laughs> Not all of us, but many of us do. A life that weakens and destroys the physical, mental, and spiritual powers. Fashionable life destroys our whole being. Physical, mental, and spiritual powers. Again from this uh, letter, this time paragraph 54. It says, although this outdoor exercise was the only medicine I took, I was rapidly restored to health. Now, I, I didn't put the whole story in here, but I'll just tell it to you briefly. This is during the time that Ellen White lived in Battle Creek, Michigan, and uh, she got very, very sick. She was so sick that people expected her to die. That's how sick she was. So her husband took her, put her in the buggy, and they traveled quite a long distance to get to a strawberry farm. And when they got to the strawberry farm, he put a chair for her because she couldn't, you know, uh, be up on her feet very long. He put a chair there, and she, as she was able, she planted strawberry plants and here, this sentence is telling you what was the end result. She didn't die. She says, although this outdoor exercise was the only medicine I took, I was rapidly restored to health. 
So she got well and served many more years uh, to God's work. Here's one from, uh, just a short one from 10th Manuscript Release, page 164. I think of how much is lost by an indoor life. So it was opened up to her how much we lose by having to spend a lot of time indoors. And Medical Ministry 232, everything that can be done should be done to give those who come to our sanitariums for treatment the opportunity of living and here's the phrase I hope that will stick in all of our minds. The opportunity of living as much as possible in the open air. The purpose of the sanitarium is to teach people how to live. So what this is telling us is that you go to the sanitarium to learn that you should be outdoors as much as possible. Then you go home and you live that lifestyle afterward. Outdoors as much as possible. <clears throat> now, why is it that we stay indoors so much? Well, I may not have a complete list. You might be able to add to this, but it's too hot or it's too cold. <laughs> and so we want to be at the right temperature. And so we don't want to be outdoors. Well, uh, there are ways around that. We can be outdoors earlier in the morning if it's too hot and later in the evening. Uh, if it's too cold, we can put on more clothes so that we're not cold. But that should not be a hindrance to us. Another big one is the bugs. <laughs> People don't like to be bothered by the bugs. You know, we are blessed here. I've lived in a number of places in the United States. We have less bugs here than any other place that bother you. And so we're fortunate. You know, we used to not even have any mosquitoes, but they stopped spraying. And so now we have mosquitoes here. But... Uh, up north, they have what they call black flies. And I mean, they come in droves after you. <laughs> and if you walk in the woods, you will be attacked by hundreds of mosquitoes. We have some here, but I mean, it's, it's really something. Yeah, deer flies are, are very uh, annoying and painful. So. We are blessed. If we can't do it here, we'll never do it anywhere. <laughs> we can somehow uh, tolerate the bugs. Now, the one thing that was the most uh, uh, difficult for me to bear was the, the ones that get in your pores. Um, chiggers. chiggers, yeah, chiggers. But I almost never get chiggers anymore. I keep it all mowed around the house for quite some distance and I don't go through tall grass and so on. So uh, I've learned how to avoid them. I believe you can, for all practical purposes, avoid them. Number three, we have so much inside work to do. But you know, some of that inside work is taking care of that which we're not supposed to spend too much time with. And so we might be able to find a way to do less inside work. And number four is probably the strongest one of all, and that's just habit. We're, we're used to that. We don't think, well, I could do this activity outdoors. You know, I could, I could take my devotions outdoors. Or I could do this outdoors. I don't have to do this inside. Um, so we might want to examine our habits and see if we can't uh, make a change. Now, 
How are we going to get more time outdoors? Well, one way is to garden because the weeds grow really good in this part of the, the country. And so you have to, if you're going to raise a garden, you have to spend the time to keep the weeds out and to do the other things that are needed. Plus, you'll uh, be healthier with a garden. Number two, which I've already mentioned, find ways to do more things outdoors. Just think in terms of, you know, what, what could I do uh, that would uh, be possible to do outdoors? Take less time with indoor projects. I've mentioned that one too already. It may be difficult. I don't have all the answers, you know, to this. Here's one that I've thought of doing. I never have uh, done it yet. But <clears throat> especially during the time when my lungs were so compromised that I, I could tell the difference in breathing indoors from outdoors. You know, most people can't tell much different. Their lungs are good enough. They, can, they, they don't know the difference. But I could tell the difference. As soon as I got outdoors, I could breathe better. So during that time, I was thinking, you know, I need to, to screen in an area on the back porch where we can sleep out there. <laughs> well, I got enough better. I, the pressure went off, but getting the sermon ready together, I'm thinking about it again, <laughs> uh, sleeping outdoors. And, you know, we might not be able to do it 100% of the year, but just think, eight more hours of being outdoors. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's quite an addition to your, your program. There's probably other things we could say, but I hope I've stimulated you to want to spend more time outdoors. And I believe, based on what we've studied, you will be better off. Now, I have uh, understood this before, and for that reason, I do spend a lot of time outdoors. I'm not just telling you something I'm not doing. I spend a lot of time outdoors in yard work, in uh, garden work, and uh, other things that can be done outdoors. So, uh, I believe it has. It has helped my health to wear... Uh, by now, I might not have been able to function at all, but the Lord is blessing me to where I can continue to function fairly well. And may the Lord bless you to have benefits from finding a way to be outdoors more.